Victor Medical Report. Dr. Bell will be right back, and uh, we're going to start off the show talking about uh, how the Sandy Hook gun control push has spectacularly backfired on the American fascist. Um, the public uh, is actually beginning to wake up to the globalist, Zionist, false flag events, um, and I think that means things will never be the same again. Uh, one of my favorite political quotes is from Abraham Lincoln. Uh, Abe said, you can fool all of the people some of the time, and some of the people all the time, but you can't fool all of the people all the time. And uh, we've had too many improbable, uh, unbelievable things happen, uh, especially beginning with 911, that has just led us uh, down the path of fascism and shredding our constitutional rights. And uh, people are beginning to wake up. And uh, Hi, Jim, I'm back God now. Hi, uh, how are you feeling? Better? Thanks, uh, much better. Thanks, co-host, uh, for uh, picking things up. You've got a lot to say today, so let's uh, just continue talking because... Well, uh, well, yeah, I, we I have a lot of news to cover. Yeah, there's a, a, a number of things I, I've posted on my blog, and, and uh, uh, one of the big uh, stories, I think, is, is how, and this uh, comes from the trenchesworldridereport.com, really good site, uh -huh. and um, uh, one of the things that, uh, you know, they, they have looked at is how this post-Sandy Hook gun control push has really just spectacularly backfired in America. Uh, and I'm hearing from people that uh, go to gun shows, and I, I usually don't. I, I, I have some guns, but I'm not uh, too fanatic about it. But I, I want to tell you, they are selling anything and everything they can. Well, people, I, I, got an, I, I got an idea, marketing idea for a new T-shirt. It would include uh, it would include Obama with a cigarette hanging from his mouth because they always show his teeth white on these big news broadcasts. <laughs> so they must whiten his teeth before every time before it goes before a camera because he's a chain smoker. Right in the, green, in the room behind the Oval Office, he's a chain smoker, and he'd have an AK-47 with a 45 round clip, and he says, "What do you think of my of my gun grab now?" And we'd be hanging from <laughs> his his chest, right? Uh, well, I'll tell you, I don't think the American public thinks very much of it. Uh, well, the, there's seven father, senators that are there's seven seven senators that should feel an itching sensation on their back of the neck. Almost like the guillotine that was hauled out uh, into the storming of the Bastille, that their political life is is now significantly shortened, because in 2014 all these Democratic uh, senators are in gun states. They're finished, and that includes Mr. Reed, who's the Arizona uh, Senate senator, because his moves to try to grab guns in a state that is very gun, pro gun means his political life is over. Good. Good, very good. And Feinstein should go, and Lieberman, and of course the uh, wonderful mayor of New York, Bloomberg. You know, I, and, and so many of these people are Jews, and I want to tell you, they are putting they're, 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 uh, they're, they're, the they're Jewish themselves population. Jews. They're, 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 in they're not Jews. They're, let's call them. Jesus calls things straight. You know, if Jesus was on right now, he would be like the Rush Limbaugh well, he said of Jews religion. are not Jews. He, you know what he said? You're of the synagogue of Satan. He called it straight up. Yeah. You're yeah. not Jews, okay? The word Jew means praiser of the Most High God. They call themselves Jews so they can besmirch the, the ancient wisdom of the Hebrews and the, and the tribe of Judah that were a shining light to the ancient world. Well, the thing is, by, by, by taking this fascist position to take America's guns away, they, uh, they paint their entire tribe of people, and a great many of those people uh, are, are very much opposed to gun control because they know that that's what Hitler did in Germany. And uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's blatantly dangerous for uh, the, the, the uh, mass of the Jewish people for so many of their senators and, and mayors and leaders to get up demanding gun control. And, you know, some of these kooks in New York, I mean, they've gone so far. Basically, overnight, they said, if you have a bigger than a seven-round clip, well, you're, you're a felon. You're committing the law. Overnight. They forgot to exclude the police departments, so every cop in the state that had an automatic weapon, which was almost every one, 
uh, was a felon, and they had to rush through emergency corrective legislation. Uh, that, that kind of stuff is un-American. It has no place. Well, let's put it, it this way. And, and this is, if they want to consider us a threat, consider it a threat. And I'm not personally saying that I'm going to be involved in doing it, but I won't say either way. But I can tell you, if they start attacking in New York State with the current laws they passed there against guns, and they start in the night at 2 a.m. kicking down doors and trying to take the guns from veterans, they're not going to live long. The well, policemen and, and, and the SWAT and most teams... cops won't do it because <clears throat> they know that. They're right, but you need to understand, when you have a veteran who's gone two and three and four, more terms actually they had, more tours of duty in these countries like Afghanistan and Iraq, which are the armpit of the world, um, why would you go and take the guns from these men where they literally are psychologically married to that gun now? If you take it away, it's like sawing off their leg. They go into a panic state. Okay? So, well, I'll tell you what will happen if you come to take my guns away. I will give them to you. Absolutely. One bullet Whoa. at a time. Right, exactly. Now, uh, if people have been asking me to post up, which I think I'm going to give some ideas. I won't give, you know, working plans and everything, but I'll give some more ideas under the preparedness list. Uh, so that list is going to be updated. I'm going to give some ideas on some unconventional weapons that are considerably more dangerous than guns, by the way. <clears throat> and I want people to understand, I don't want people to indiscriminately use these. I want them to make it known to the powers that be that they, number one, should join with the sheriff to become proper, duly trained uh, militia that know how to operate their guns, store them properly so children and idiots and mentally ill people can't get them. Uh, I want them to, um, to, to take training, to cert training and ATLS and trauma training because you don't just become a militia person without learning how to do what they call emergency medical care as well on the battlefield or if there's a state of emergency, you want to be able to help firefighters, etc. Uh, so what I see happening is people need to get more responsible that it's us that's going to maintain civilization. It's not the police. It's not the firefighters. If all hell breaks loose. It's not the fascists. It's, it's not the fascist it's government that sits there. The yeah, and I call the District of Criminals, D.C. These people are sitting around or they're flying around like an Air Force One or they're sitting in the Situation Room. It's us. Uh, I'm getting myself reactivated in my trauma training. I'm going to audit some trauma training courses here at the University of California. Uh, I'm going to get involved with CERT, even though I'm busy as hell. I'm going to get involved in volunteering in the fire department here. So if there's real serious problems, I can use all my experience. I recertified, I think, six times in ATLS. Uh, the first one was the 82nd Airborne back in the early 80s. So um, I know a lot about trauma. I worked in emergency for years, trauma, burn units, etc. And what I realize is that uh, it, what Obama is doing is he wants to flush down the toilet all the experience of us senior doctors that have so much knowledge you couldn't buy it for millions of dollars. You couldn't. And the fresh doctors coming out of residency or medical training, they don't have a clue how crazy it is in practice. What Obama wants to do is actually practice medicine with a license with these committees and determine what care people receive. And they don't realize it's against the law to practice medicine with a license. It's crazy. And yet a committee well, is going to decide how people are going to get treated. They're above the law. They're above right. the Constitution and in their minds. Uh, and, you know, here, here's, uh, and by the way, I, I had EMT training and I was a volunteer fireman, which is, of course, nothing compared to physicians' uh, training. But, you know, it, it is very good to have that kind of training. And it's not, uh, it, it's the experiences you have can always uh, save lives and can come in very, very handy. Uh, and it can be just, you can be going down the street and all of a sudden you're, you're at the scene of a terrible accident before. Uh, an ambulance gets there, you may have to stop uh, arterial blood flow. Uh, and I mean, there's all kind of things, and, and uh, it, there's nothing like experience and training. But here's something we're going to have to worry about. You know, we've got all these armed drones uh, all over the world now. God, know, and I, I, in honesty, God only knows how many countries we're fighting in right now. I don't know, and I read more than the average hundred people put together, and I can't tell you how many countries we're fighting in. I know well, we have well, troops. In 35 African countries, but how many countries we're fighting in is is probably a dozen or more, and uh, we're going to have to worry about drones in America. They're already planning on 30,000 uh, drones They're, in America. Six months and, ago, they got the uh, they got the airspace, but within two years, and this is in public records, so you can check it yourself out there. Don't believe Deagle. Within two years, by 2015, they want them weaponized on American soil. They hit you with a Stinger sure. missile. Anywhere inside the United States. Welcome back. 
back, and um, I'm going to change hats now for both you and for me, uh, Tim. Um, to uh, we're going to be uh, for a couple moments here. We're going to be interplanetary uh, civilization archaeologists, and we're coming from a different world. We're different kinds of beings, but it's say a million years from now, and we want to analyze what happened to civilization on Earth. And we come down, and we find that much of the life is actually gone. We're surprised, you know, that there's lots of evidence there was lots of life on this planet. In fact, there's even evidence of early advanced being built cities and roadways, and you know, and even when we look underground, we see advanced tunnels and underground cities and find all kinds of things. Well, here I'm going to call this um, scenario X, and let's say that the globalists, we're including the Vatican, the uh, the Druidic Council, the United Nations, all the globalist international banks, there's the Satanists that run the planet. They know that event X is coming. In fact, they may not know an exact date, but they have a pretty good idea approximately when it's going to happen. And they, they know uh, as a result of event X, it's an extinction level event, that, uh, that result Y is going to occur. And Y will result uh, in uh, a number of changes to the planet that only the ones in the know and ones that respond to this are, are going to survive and become the, we call the, the population Z, we'll call it, you know, the survivors. Uh, what we've had in the past basically is a superculture of the elite. We've had a bifurcation of our science into tier one and tier two science. And we've seen this in attempts in other cultures like in Russia, where they kind of divided the society and done this. But let's say there was going to be an event. And I'm not saying this prophetically or scientifically, but we know that and I had a presentation that we just did uh, yesterday. Um, sorry, um, day before yesterday, we did this with uh, Professor McCanny. It's on the live stream channel, part one and part two. And he put together a very convincing thesis that every comet is a very powerful plasma object. They try to say it's reflected sunlight that makes it bright, brighten up when it gets near the sun. No, when you have an object moving at 70,000 to 100,000 miles per hour uh, and it's got highly charged plasma molecules in it, um, it's not just reflected sunlight. These are like a fluorescent tube. That's the electric theory of, I think that's what it's right. called, the electric theory of the right. universe. Right. Now, what happens is most yeah, of these and, are... And that, that yeah. by the way, makes sense. Right. Now, what happens is he, he's a very good scientist, and he's talked to tier one scientists. He's one of the only ones that's talked about this theory uh, in the open. But the fact is the Vatican, all of their telescopes are designed to pick up comets. And the reason is every ancient culture knew the comets were really bad. In fact, it's thought that the comet that struck the Earth and did, got rid of the dinosaurs was a six-mile-wide uh, comet that struck off the Yucatan Peninsula. The latest the theory, is, by the way, on that is it, it, it actually did kill the dinosaurs off very quickly. It right. didn't no. take 300,000 years, as some no, people no, said. It was exactly. very, very quickly. And by the way, what happened is it caused such a nuclear, uh, you know, post-comet winter that the temperature plunged and the oxygen concentration dropped from about uh, somewhere around 30 to 40 percent oxygen down to around 5. So it's basically the animal suffocated if they did survive, uh, and it was a nuclear winter everywhere. Or, you know, like, like a nuclear winter, but basically a post-comet strike winter. And they had super storms everywhere. Now, let's say that this comet that's coming by, uh, that's going to whip past Mars in October, and going to get into the inner heliosphere of the sun, precipitates a CME. I call it the kill shot. And I've been having a lot of um, scientific information reviewed, and also a lot of what we call dreams and visions about this, that the kill shot's coming. And uh, people should know that. We, we, you no, know, you asked a couple questions. I said the most important thing, whether you're listening to this show or you just want to know the real truth, is to ask better questions. And the first question I'd ask is why, after presenting all the data to the government, and this includes people like Michio Kaku, the physicist that's on the cable networks, etc., 40,000 scientists, while well, we have a quorum of the Congress that passed the law, uh, and this is Democratic and Republican, by the way, uh, it was killed in the Senate by Lisa Murkowski, the Alaskan rhino Republican, for no good reason. I don't understand her psychology, but killed the bill that hardened the power grid. What that means, basically, if you have a bad CME, even just like one like the Carrington event, but if that... Which happens every 150 years, and we're due. And, and we're due. And the, the fact is that this comet was probably precipitated uh, a super storm on the sun, and if it was Earth-centric, bye-bye civilization. Now, as I said before, I want to use this analogy so people get this straight. We're not going back to the Stone Age. 
we're going back to the literally the ninth ring of Hades. The Stone Age would be like at the uh, Sandals Resort by comparison. <laughs> okay. Now, I, I want you to just visualize this in your mind. Use your imagination. And it doesn't matter if you're talking about a big city like Los Angeles or a little tiny community in the middle of nowhere. It would be like being um, in a barrel of... Well, a barrel if, of... Um, uh, Dr. Bell, something like this happened uh, when the Roman legions pulled back. Uh, we went into the Dark Ages. You know, you had uh, a sophisticated society and uh, in, in England and, and in much of Europe. And it was all dependent on uh, the Roman legions maintaining law and order, maintaining communications, and the entire system of education, of culture, uh, heated houses, etc., uh, water from the hills and aqueducts and so forth. And when the Roman legions pulled back, the people were suddenly uh, left to fend for themselves. It, it, and be we a lot quickly worse went into the Dark Ages. Well, most of the society back then was agrarian. Uh, you know, even back in the 1920s, uh, probably 70 to 75 percent of the population were familiar with growing gardens. Now it's less than anymore. Right. So our civilization won't ex won't last. We're not talking about uh, uh, two years. For the uh, experts I've talked to, Canada, U.S., and Australia, they expect 90% of the U.S., Canada, and Western populations, just as the power goes up, no strobing of the Earth with ultraviolet light, no proton or electron storm, no uh, super quakes or super storms, no tsunamis, nothing, just power up. 90% well, of the population that can be, will be dead. That can be uh, a couple high-altitude uh, nuclear devices going off an EMP uh, a barrage, electromagnetic pulse. Right. Here's what I suspect will happen, though. This is a scenario. I'm going to pick a date, but I don't know what date. If this is let's say it's October 17th. Um, and by the way, let's say it's Friday, just for fun, because we're in 2013. So it's Friday, let's October, make it October 17th. 13th. That way, yeah. it's Friday the 13th. Yeah. <laughs> okay, just for just for fun. And it turns out that that uh, NASA and their, and their IRAS uh, infrared satellites pick up. Uh, and our SOHO satellites, etc., all of them pick up that there's been a major uh, coronal storm on the sun as this comet passes and a major surge, and it turns out it's Earth-centric. That'll take eight and a half minutes for that, that sunlight to start hitting the Earth, and you'll see, first see an electron storm, uh, and you'll see light, and you may see ultraviolet strobing of the Earth, which will start to kind of, if you're outside, you won't feel good. You'll feel like somebody flicked your skin with a strong elastic. Your eyes will burn. You won't feel good. In fact, you may get nauseated. And the next thing that will happen is <clears throat> there will be a big news report that a CME is coming. you got to shut off everything in electronic and cover it with a Faraday cage or it will get fried when the plasma gets here in two and a half days. Yeah, like you, you'll be able to go make a uh, Faraday cage uh, in one minute. Right. Back in a moment. And we're, we're back. I just want to finish the scenario because Chris Harris is coming on. But uh, it, let's call it Scenario X. And let's say the globalists have known. Maybe they've known for actually maybe thousands of years, maybe hundreds. Maybe their scientists have come together to the conclusion that we're going to have an extinction level event soon. And this is why they're not concerned about the economy. They're, that's why they've peddled to the metal and they're going to blow out the dollar. And, of course, that's actually part of the economic warfare of the current economic situation, which is why the Chinese are freaked out by us blowing out the dollar because they purposely been buying treasury notes to try to keep their currency low to dump on our currency but the fact is the Chinese won't put up with, with slave wages anymore so let's say scenario X is and the biggest most likely thing is not necessarily a comet strike to the earth it is a CME from the Sun striking the earth way more likely to hit something as big as the Sun or come by it than to hit a little tiny planet earth I mean to be honest with the comet to hit the earth is probably one in Big enough to cause any destruction is probably one in, you know, 26 million years or something. It's not likely to happen. But for a large comet to strike like the uh, uh, large comet, which is the one that struck a few years ago, uh, 
the planet Jupiter, which is a pretty big planet, which is we call a, a comet uh, vacuum, if you want to call it a comet. Yeah, vacuum. it was a string of pearls that hit. It right. broke and, far and, right and, before it yeah. hit. Yeah, and when, once the comets, by the way, passed, uh, yeah, once they passed Jupiter, they brighten up. I think our globalists know that there's some major comets this year, according to NASA, is the year of the comet. Well, e e even if they don't, I, I, I think you have a, a bunch of Satan-worshipping fools that are determined to uh, to try to take the world into well, me, their one-world order. Well, let me, let me, and let they me, don't care who they yeah. kill. They want well, to no, kill. Let me, let, let, me, let me complete the thesis. Uh, the okay. thesis is they want to be the founders of the new civilization. Remember now... When people are malevolently evil, they don't think they're evil. They think they're the keepers of civilization. If you were to interview straight up Lucifer's minions and the global orders of the International State, Institute for International Studies in Britain, the CFR here, uh, the globalist organizations of the United Nations, the uh, people that are inside the highest levels of the government, they think they're doing good to maintain a seed stock of humanity. Um, they're uh, building underground cities to preserve, like the I'm sure Hitler vaults. and Stalin thought they were doing good too. Right, right. And here's the point. What my point is, you got to get inside the head of these guys to understand what they're doing. They've decided already these events are going to happen, and they're not going to tell people straight up what's coming. Okay, that's the facts. Now, let's say the event is going to happen at a date, and we're you know it could be this year, it could be 20 years from now, it could be 30 years, it could be 100. But let's say for our instance, just for the theoretical that they're nervous about this comet. This comet's going to get 16 times brighter than the moon and bigger and it hit when it gets by the, the, the sun. It's going to get really big. And uh, when it goes by the sun, it's going to generate a CME. If that CME is even remotely Earth-centric, it's going to blow up the power grid, and it's going to blow us back not to the Stone Age, but to uh, Hades. It's going to make things life on Earth horrifying. The, You'll the see electric two... universe model indicates that it will do that, and Jeff Reins has, uh, on his site, has lots of stuff about the electric universe model. And, and quite frankly, I've, I've looked at it, and I think uh, the physics is pretty strong. Yeah, if you listen to McCanny, and of course he'll be back on the program. He's actually he was in an undisclosed location by a very bad Skype. I uh, managed to have a satellite link. <laughs> And uh, But what he did is he told them, look, NASA's edging on this, and they don't want to come up straight about it, but the fact is that Tier 1 scientists are saying to uh, McCanny, you're right on, but we can't come on your program because he has his own radio show. Um, what I think is that the globalists know there's an event coming, and the one that I think is most likely is a comet precipitating a CME and a kill shot. Now, uh, if that's the case, and if it's going to happen now or in the next couple of years, because we're also reaching solar max, the next year, uh, 13 and 14, 2013, 2014, are going to be so dramatic. Now, what that does on Earth, when you have a power surge, you blow backup power for nuclear stations. You blow not only the power grid, but you also can't pump water or electricity for fuel. No, you immediately sure. stop to do, no distribution of drugs. Uh, you only have a few weeks of power for hospitals running on diesel fuel. Uh, Food runs out uh, in less than a week. Right, and so what happens is, uh, if I was going to write a B-movie script, I would call it the fourth day. And the reason is, up to the third day, up to the third day, everybody figures, well, they're going to fix it, right? They're going to fix it, right? On the fourth day, they realize, oh, crap, they're not going to fix it. <laughs> That's when they get, they realize that the refrigerator is dead. Any food they had that was good is now rotten and growing green stuff on it. And they realize, I hope our neighbor has food because we're hungry. Now, after the, after the second How week, your neighbor, the neighbor... You may have to eat him. <laughs> right, well, actually, this is something I was told straight up by my uh, Special Forces guys, and the guys who worked at the Federal, uh, at the federal Center. Uh, they've done psychological ops and everything, and they've actually calculated out that within 10 to 14 days after a major power outage, people become cannibalistic. Now, they think Dr. Deagle's just exaggerating because he wants his audience to freak out. No, I don't want you to freak out because you couldn't handle all the stuff I know. So I'm going to give you as much as I think you know to make you change your attitude. What we need to realize is if you're not a prepper, you're an idiot. You're not just a little idiot. And what I tell people, the most important prepper thing is to have a relationship with God. The next important, most important is to convince your neighbor that they need to be a prepper. Uh, even if it's just uh, getting a 20 kilowatt backup generator and the water storage and some extra food, heritage seeds, and start converting, having a, a garden in their yard and maybe some chickens if we're out in the country. People need to start having a victory garden like after the First World War. Civilization is incredibly fragile. And when you see the government 
when they've been given even laws passed by Congress, and it's obvious, and the government never goes back and visits it again, even though tons of scientists have told them to do this, that the General Accounting Office, GAO, this is the government, has said the cost of a power outage in one year will cost $6 trillion. That's a low ball number. Uh, you're talking about probably in, in one year, 90% of the U.S. population will be either dead directly or indirectly or eaten. Now, well, people say, well, they see where we, they, they have this movie coming out this summer called World War Z. Now, when the power goes out, people will act, quote, act like zombies. Right? The reason why they're doing these zombie drills all across the country last year, 2012, is because they're expecting a extinction-level event where things happen where civilization crumbles and none of the things that people are so used to, like turning the tap and getting water, or flipping the switch and getting electricity, or going down to the gas station or the grocery store, or going to the local bar and ordering up a steak sandwich or whatever, isn't there. It's almost like you've been teleported to hell. And people don't... Even if you have natural gas and the natural gas is still working or you have LP gas, most stoves require electricity to work. Certainly the ovens do. That's a a uh, gas-saving feature. Mm -hmm. I tell people, here's a couple things that I've learned uh, in in doing this. Number one, the first rule that people should have is a propane-powered 20-kilowatt to 48-kilowatt generator, depending on how large, if it's one house or more than one. Number two, you should have a solar and or wind system. If you have enough wind, uh, and you can get a, a wind turbine system pretty easily, uh, the, the best one's coming out of the V3 solar, which is 22 times more efficient, and they're coming out in the third quarter of this year. And the uh, Zenith solar is available from Israel right now. These are 20 times more efficient than regular solar panels. Storage, lithium pyrophosphate batteries. There's a U.S. manufacturer. It's a bit of a pain. And there's a distributor in Colorado. If people contact me, I can get, pass them on to. They need to start figuring out that they should start recycling for their garden and their landscaping their what we call gray water. Filter out the phosphates from your your uh, your uh, washing machine and from your showers and from your taps and sinks. And uh, all the black water goes into your septic field if you're in the country or goes back to the sewage treatment. What people need to realize is if you're not prepping right now and something catastrophic happens in two, five, ten years, it's going to be unbelievable. All you need to do, basically, I tell people the two-week, two-month, two-year rule. Two weeks, you can hunker down easily. Two months, you're going to need an army to keep people away from you. Yeah. And beyond two months, if things continue. <clears throat> this scenario doesn't require a whole lot of conjecture on anyone's part. Just think back to Hurricane Sandy and uh, in New York City when the headlines of a very distraught woman shouting at the mayor saying, we're going to die. In other words, they have no right. preparation. So, you know, that, that itself says that everything That's right. Out. That's only a, a grade one hurricane that stayed too long. That's all it was. A grade one hurricane that paused over the city. Welcome back. So, a little summary. What I suspect is that the globalists are trying to crash the world economy. They want to bring in totalitarian biometric ghost money, which basically is a mark of the beast. They want totalitarianism in every country, not just in Europe. They want it in America. They want drones over the United States. In two years, they want them weaponized. What you have to understand is the globalists would like to have World War III. They'd like totalitarianism as quickly as possible to increase the chances of survival of the globalists, even bringing on a great war. Uh, in advance of, quote, scenario X, which is probably something like a kill shot, so that they would increase the chances of survival of the global elite and their seed stock of humans that they sequester underground or take biological samples and grow fetuses and whatever in artificial uteri. What I see coming is that our civilization has reached the, the nidir. This is the, the, the break point where the, things like the Sakhalin Seed Vault in Svalbard Island in Norway is a, an external example of what they want to do to humanity. And the globalists really think they're doing the right thing. When you talk to people like, uh, you know, like uh, Bill Gates, these people think they're geniuses. They think they, they have the courage to face the survival of humanity. And you ha- if you don't get inside their crazy head and their demonically twisted mind, you can't understand what they're doing. They think they're literally the saviors of civilization. 
And once you start to grasp that, you realize that's why they're lying to us. They think we're going to decrease the chances of humanity surviving by telling us the truth. Yeah. You know, we were talking about preparation and, and the tools required, and of course, repentance and, and understanding your place in relation to God. The most important thing, the next thing, needs to be discipline, and I think a lot of people are lacking that, the discipline and then the skill sets. Well, they all, they'll never take personal responsibility. They say, you know, the, one of the typical stories of, well, I know you're prepared, Deagle, so I'm going to come to your place. I said, well, <laughs> if, you're a friend, if you're a friend of mine and you're a military, especially, and you have to bring your own guns, and Emma, you're welcome, because I, I said, I have a garden and a greenhouse, and I've got food storage, and more than welcome to come on over. Uh, but if you're just going to be a sloucher and want to try to attack me and my family, um, I'm going to be a secretary for Jesus, and I'm going to arrange an appointment. So, so the, 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 with, uh, with St. Peter and the pearly gates. Exactly. So now here's the point. Uh, we don't want to see that. In fact, as I say, after your first stop prepper uh, needs are met with the Most High God, your next is to tell people that something big's coming. And everybody knows in their gut, and the church basically is dead in the water. Um, Moses was trained to be one of the high priests. He's going to become Pharaoh. His name, Moses, isn't his name at all. Do you know when they talk about Tut Moses, Tut this and that? It means drawn out of Tut. So even though he was adopted, he was supposed to be the next pharaoh. He had all the high priest training. He knew about all the ancient comets and all the extra superstorms and everything. And we're gonna we're gonna need that that kind of uh, uh, well the, the 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 discipline. I keep on going back to that will give you the uh, wherewithal to utilize your skill sets effectively, including uh, boring off the masses and and of those who are less disciplined, and they will be seeking refuge in places where you don't want them to come. That is your house. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. We also, though, you need to have food. You need to have water. You need to have weapons. You need to have those skill sets so you know how to grow food. You know how... Yeah, but, but beyond uh, two months, you have to be at least a gas tank away from a big city. You have to have a small community. Mom and pop are not going to survive, even in their own little bunker out in the middle of nowhere. doesn't matter if it's northern Maine, in a little steel bunker off the side of a nice lake. You forget it. Yeah. yeah. We have some well, events happening. There are, I call them, there's two types of things happening. I worked in trauma and emergency for years, and I, I broke this down because I'm a bit of a humorist and sarcastic. That's why I got the title back in medical school and residency of Dr. Wild Bill. And the first thing I'd say to make, because the funniest people in the world are not comedians and on stand-up comedian Hollywood. They're people that populate your emergency departments and your burn units. These are the funniest human beings that ever lived. And uh, we would say, even if somebody had 90% burns, there's two types of things, accidents and on purposes. It's like uh, deciding that you're going to clean your car with gasoline and you decide to light up. <laughs> That's not an accident. That's not an accident. That's an on purpose. Okay. And then the guy is still kind of cursing that the car isn't clean yet, and he's got ninety percent burns, and you can see his blue eyes shining out. And you need to put pigskin all over him and silvadine, and you got to spray him down, put a central line because he's going to get dehydrated and go into renal shutdown, and soon he's going to be septic. And he's still cursing at you with the smoke is curling off his body. Now. Now, I, I knew a guy once that was on oxygen because his, his lungs were going, and uh, he would alternate between uh, taking puffs of cigarettes and, uh, and putting the oxygen oh, yeah. back. That happened to me at the Vancouver General, and, and the nurse walked in and said, uh, I think such and such had smuggled some cigarettes to this guy. I said, I'm going to go in and check. So I walked in the room, and I couldn't believe it. He had the oxygen going at like four liters a minute. He stuck the cigarette through the oxygen mask hole. Into his face, oh <laughs> and, and, and you know what happened next. He had an explosion. That that cigarette became a small uh, improvised uh, explosive device. Okay, IED it was an IED cigarette, and and literally he got second degree burns to his entire face. He had his beard blown off, and he came out looking so surprised. He said, "You just blew yourself up." And literally the explosion, you can hear, literally, uh, it, it blew me out of the room. It blew the sheets off the bed and all the clothes <laughs> off them. <laughs> so now here's what I'm talking about, okay? Uh, we have this going on with San Onofre. Chris, tell us the update. Because what we're going, going on here, believe it or not, uh, Barbara Boxer is actually doing her job. And I don't really want to give Democrats credit, but I'm going to give her credit this time. She's freaked. I'm freaked. Anybody here that's involved in Southern California is freaked out by these lying pieces of human trash. 
Mitsubishi Corporation and Edison Electric. They want to restart this plant and try to say it's like for like when they tried to sidestep the regulations. Then we got Fukushima. My RAD detector now has gone up to 80 parts per million. It'll fluctuate 40 to 80. But it hasn't been doing that for maybe seven, eight months. And it's doing it because he decided last week, we cannot store this uh, highly radioactive water. We will take the least radioactive water and dump in millions of tons of water into the Pacific Ocean. I think like, the Pacific Ocean is not your toilet, Japan, Edison Electric, or TEPCO. <laughs> there, you know, uh, just today there was an announcement. You know, Duke, Duke Energy is a very large southern uh, nuclear power plant operator and, and also fossil plant operator. They announced today that because of some extensive repairs due to the Crystal River nuclear plant in Florida, they will not restart it. They will they will decommission. And that's the second one that within a year that has been uh, formally announced. There was another one, the, the Kiwani plant up in uh, uh, they're up in Upper Wisconsin. Uh, they said that we can't compete with natural gas. See, that's, yeah, that hasn't happened before, and so so a lot. There's a lot of weighing out the uh, value of using a different fuel, and it looks like natural gas is winning, and that goes with all the fracking and everything else. I'm not saying that's a good thing. I'm saying that it, I'm just reporting what is. We could talk about that if you want. But that Fra- fracking, is, uh, uh, fracking is a double-edged sword. When you hydrofrack and pull a water table down so low, the tr- trees die because the roots get fed with water. Bad idea. When you hydrofrack with chemicals and it ends up in the water table, bad idea. When you hydrofrack and you get down to the water table near fault lines... And you start separating fault lines, you precipitate earthquakes. Very bad idea. So <clears throat> it's not a straight-edged uh, sword at all. It's a double-edged sword, exactly. and it can cut us as well. So although everybody's kind of rubbing their hands together, uh, drilling for oil and gas needs to be done very judiciously and carefully. Yeah, I, I predict based on that, uh, you may not see you may not see San Andreas free follow follow through with this. If, with this if they try to file this to not. open it up, I'm going to personally sue them as well as many other organizations down here. Um, yeah. Fukushima Daiichi, we need to have an international court of justice suit filed in the Hague against Japan, against the Japanese Diet, which is their stupid uh, parliament there, against TEPCO, against General Electric, which is a multinational U.S.-based corporation, one of the czars, by the way, the abominator. Uh, you know, uh, Actually, i got a new name for, for uh, Obama, and we need to get him you know, some of these good artists out there, they can make a Judge Dredd version of Obama with one of the Judge Dredd helmets on. Uh, we'll call him, uh, you know, call him Obama Judge Dredd, you know. He's sitting in the Situation Room with a Obama cigarette Dredd. hanging out. Kind of, yeah, Obama Dredd, you know. And he says, I'm Judge, Jury, and Executioner. <laughs> well, unfortunately, that really is the case. And he, he now claims that he has the authority to kill Americans uh, and to be the judge, the jury, isn't that the, and the executioner. Isn't that and the operation that's of the king before the Magna Carta? the American Carter? way. You know, that, even, that, king George, <laughs> even King George III didn't claim that level of bar. This is pre-Magna Carta. The Magna Carta set a proper rules of operation between the king and the, and the lords. Yeah, but uh, that's, uh, that's a scary thing. That uh, that 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 much power and uh, it's and not the American way. We're already we're already on the kill list, I suppose. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, oh, we yeah. know that we know that Adolf Hitler had syphilis. I'm not sure what cortical degenerative brain disease Obama has, but it's not funny. <laughs> Get right, we've got folks. God bless. Yeah. As I say, ask better questions. If you're not a prepper, I'm not going to give you any quarter at all. Everybody's got to be a prepper. You better tell your neighbors, too. Stuff is coming.